Hey guys, do you ever just randomly remember very obscure pieces of media that you had no idea you had any memory of? Oh, what? What's that? Oh, you don't. Oh, well, uh, that makes a very large portion of my content very alienating and unrelatable. <laughs> well, regardless of that, I, I recently had this happen to me, and the piece of media was the Disney XD show Pair of Kings, which aired from 2010 to 2013 which was right at the tail end of when I actually watched things like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon and stuff like that. So for those of you who didn't get to experience this decade-late attempt to copy Drake and Josh, you guys missed out on Disney trying to extend the relevance of Mitchell Musso and Doc Shaw, uh, who were just coming off of their respective shows, Hannah Montana and Sweet Life on Deck ending. Uh, this show follows a pair of twins named Boomer and Brady, played by Doc Shaw and Mitchell Musso, who we are supposed to believe is biracial. So yeah, the uh, the premise is that these twins are living with their aunt and uncle in Chicago, and then one day, these people from some fictional island in the Pacific Ocean come to their school and tell them that they are actually the kings of their island because their dad was the previous king. Uh, which is very interesting to me because uh, they are very clear about their dad being white and their mom being black uh, before they found out that they were kings. The reality is, our mom was black and our dad was white. So is that not true? Since their dad is the royalty of this island in the Pacific Ocean, which would almost definitely make him not white. So are we now supposed to believe that Mitchell Musso is not only half black, but also half Pacific Islander? <laughs> or are we just supposed to ignore the fact that people native to islands in the Pacific Ocean are almost always not white? Alright, alright. Let's, let's get back on topic. I am making this video because almost everybody I know has either not watched this show or not even heard of this show, and there are not many things that frustrate me more in life than when I have way too much knowledge about something and I can't talk to anybody I know about it. So I am going to force my YouTube viewers to listen to me talk about this show. So like I said earlier, this show is pretty much just Disney trying to make their own version of Drake and Josh, even down to the two goofy brothers engaging in wacky silly hijinks while having a younger relative who is constantly trying to stifle them framework, uh, <laughs> with their younger cousin who was supposed to be the next king, playing the same role as Megan did with Drake and Josh, along with a bunch of other like teenage boy sitcom tropes and cliches. And one of those cliches is the, uh, the constant use of casual misogyny for comedy. Yeah, it wouldn't be a 2000 sitcom geared toward pubescent boys without uh, one of the main protagonists constantly harassing the female supporting characters. Like, it's literally a main character trait of Mitchell Musso's character that he is always pursuing and making comments about Michaela, the royal advisor's daughter, um, even after she rejects him literally every time. Now, this isn't the most popular or the only show that has promoted this kind of behavior to young and impressionable children, but it's still super disappointing to see that being such an integral part of the show. Also, while I was watching a few episodes of the show, uh, I came across this line, which uh, caught me very off guard. <laughs> if you're a king, then where's your queen? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe don't hit on people with uh, quirky one-liners about what you presume their ethnicity to be. Um, also don't use people who are based on or are historical figures to try and get dates. Like, that just feels very wrong. Especially someone like Pocahontas. <laughs> and if you thought that was bad, uh, just wait. There's more because the cringeworthy moments do not stop at objectifying women and not taking no as an answer. Because most of the humor of the show is pretty much just Brady and Boomer being losers while also somehow being obnoxiously overconfident and unaware of themselves. So as you can imagine, there's just lots and lots of unwatchable television that I don't even think the target demographic would enjoy or even relate to. Like, there's one episode where the twins are surfing, and then they start beef with the Big Kahula, which is the title they give to, like, the best surfer or whatever. Um, and the Big Kahula happens to be a man with dwarfism. Uh, 
So as you can imagine, they made a lot of jokes about his physical appearance, because for some reason, most children's sitcoms are just very mean-spirited sometimes. On top of the jokes about this man's appearance, the show also decided to give the man dreadlocks and a Caribbean-esque accent. Name's Ibachi. I be the big kahula. Now go away. You brothers can no surf here. Sorry, no speako de Frencho. It's not French. It's chibi chibi, a language his forefathers taught him. Well, maybe he needs a fifth father to teach him how to talk good. <laughs> <laughs> this here my beats kukla poops. You be for bachi. You pays the price. No more shorts. Uh, I will be refraining from further comment on that, but you know. This episode is uh, very weird and uh, makes me uneasy. But hey, you know, that episode was very early on in the show's run. Maybe they got their shit together in the later episodes. So let's just take a quick look at, you know, an episode from the third season. Oyster? Chomp chomp. <laughs> oh, ladybug. Mmm, <laughs> chomp chomp. <laughs> oh, okay. So it looks like Boomer's on a double date with his friend or something. Okay, that's cool. He's a friend now. That's nice. Uh, but I wonder where Mitchell Musso is. Soya and Celeste are not here to be groomed. Keep your monkey paws to yourself. <laughs> now, since my brother already had his appetizer. Oh. Uh. Excuse me? Brother? That guy is his brother? Did they recast Mitchell Musso's character with the guy from Lemonade Mouth? Yeah, so it might seem that way, but uh, actually, apparently this guy right here is Boz, uh, who is the king of a neighboring island, but it actually turns out he's also somehow the long-lost triplet brother of Boomer and Brady, um, making the whole ethnicity situation I brought up earlier even more ridiculous than it already was. <laughs> and you may be wondering, why would they bring on another brother? It's called Pair of Kings, meaning two kings. And well, the answer to that question is that uh, the show still only follows two brothers because Mitchell Musso, our biracial king, you know, he was fired by Disney for uh, <laughs> getting a DUI uh, in October of 2011, uh, which was just before the show got renewed for a third season. Uh, so instead of just calling off the show and like the third season entirely, uh, they just hired Adam Hicks, whose show Zeke and Luther had just come to an end, and had him basically just stand in for Mitchell Musso's character for the third season. Since a lot of the humor and the plot lines of Hicks's character could have very easily been meant for Musso's character. Uh, now I think I gotta let you in on some info about Mr. Adam Hicks here. Uh, because in the past few years, uh, well, he has been doing some very not-so-Disney-approved things. <laughs> and right about now, you might be wondering, well, what did he do? And, uh, well, uh, armed robbery. Uh, <laughs> and not just one, either. <laughs> so yeah, he was, uh, he was arrested in 2018 and uh, has been sentenced to five years in prison for a string of armed robberies he committed. So the legacy of the show is that uh, two of its main actors have been arrested for some pretty serious shit. Uh, and the funniest part to me is that the guy who they replaced Mitchell Musso with ended up committing arguably the more serious crime. I'd like to believe that it's because Disney tried to pull a fast one on us by trying to make us believe that these guys are half black and half Pacific Islander. <laughs> like even if the show took place in some like alternate universe where the natives of Pacific Islands were in fact white, like, they still tried to make us believe that these guys are half black. <laughs> like, these guys, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, there's no way, there's just no way, there's no way, like, he's literally ginger. And Michel Musso. Like, I'm no, like, genetic biologist or whatever you call it, but like, I don't think it's very likely that, uh, this guy could be half black, you know, but whatever, you know, I'm sure Disney hasn't done anything else to be ignorant toward matters of ethnicity and race in the past. 
All right, guys, uh, that does it for today's video. I'm sorry if at points it felt like I was like jumping all over the place when talking about the show, um, but I just really wanted to make a video about it, um, but I couldn't really find any through lines that uh, connected everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, so you get a big old mess of things I noticed from watching and researching this relic of late 2000s Disney that nobody else remembers. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you like and comment on this video. Uh, and if you want to see more of my stuff, please subscribe. Uh, you know, share this with your friends. Uh, you know the deal. Um, fucking 51% of you guys who are watching this video are not subscribed, so that's kind of fucked up. Uh, hit that MFN subscribe button, you fucking dummies. Um. Yeah, that's it. Bye.